Hello everyone, welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more exciting true crime content. Today we're looking at a car valet firm that was flown halfway around the world by a £113 million bank fraudster known as Fees and Chowdhury or Fizzy and are still owed cash for the work they carried out. Mr Chowdhury jetted a stream of workers from Platinum Polish to Dubai and Pakistan to treat his luxury vehicles. He hired staff from the Glasgow-based company to give his beloved Porsches, Lamborghinis and Bentleys a VIP polish. Employees were picked up in Dubai's seven-star Jumeirah Hotel for the job of a lifetime. They then travelled to Mr Chowdhury's Lahore Villa to give another high-tech treatment. But Mr Chowdhury's relationship with the Gorbals firm hit the skids after the con man failed to cough up for the work they did. It's understood that Mr Chowdhury still owes about £1,500 for ceramic glass coatings that were put on several of his cars. A source says that Fizzy was flash and burned through ridiculous amounts of cash. Money was no object to him because every penny was stolen and if he spent it, it'd just steal more. The boys at Platinum Polish worked on all of his motors and couldn't believe their luck when Fizzy asked them to go to Dubai and Pakistan. Some folk might think that that was enough going to Dubai and staying in a fancy hotel, but if employees are overseas, it means that work in Glasgow can't be carried out. Mr Chowdhury has been jailed for 11 years at Southwark Crown Court last August for being convicted of Britain's biggest cyber fraud. He headed a gang of fraudsters in a so-called phishing scam, which saw victims being duped into revealing their bank details over the phone. Mr Chowdhury's crew then swiped huge sums of cash from their bank accounts while the line was blocked. The probe also involved officers from Police Scotland, Greater Manchester, Merseyside and West Yorkshire. Mr Chowdhury, 25, of Pollux Shields, Glasgow, tried to flee to Pakistan but was caught boarding a Paris to Lahore flight with a fake passport. He spent a week in French immigration centres before being flown back to the UK. His brother, Newman, was sentenced to three and a half years for money laundering offences. About £66 million of the £113 million the gang stole is still missing and investigators face a battle trying to track it down. Huge sums of cash were invested in property and businesses in Lahore and Dubai. Platinum Polish's boss said that there's no point moaning because it's not going to change things. There's still a bill outstanding, but obviously he's not around anymore, so what can I do? I didn't really know the guy, he just hired us to look after his cars. The mastermind behind the UK's biggest ever cyber fraud must serve another two years in jail for plotting to get his hands on £500,000 in an identical con from his prison cell. Fazan Hamid, 26, was jailed for 11 years last September for heading a phishing scam which conned 750 RBS and Lloyds customers out of £113 million. Mr Hamid from Glasgow partied with pop stars while splurging on Rolex watches, expensive jewellery and trips to Dubai. Nicknamed Fizzy, the con man also owned a fleet of luxury cars, including a Bentley, Lamborghini and Porsches and more than £200 million rolled in from the scam each month. He was so obsessive over his collection of motors, he even even flew car polishers 8,000 miles from Scotland to Pakistan to polish his Porsches outside his villa in Lahore. Police later found an image of the fraudster shopping over FaceTime while on one of his cronies held the phone to show him jeans. His younger brother and the gang's accountant, Newman Chowdhury, 22, was jailed for three and a half years for conspiracy to launder some of the ill-gotten cash through the property investments in Scotland and Pakistan. Victims were contacted by hustlers pretending to be from Lloyds or RBS, anti-fraud department, who would dupe them into revealing their account details. These were then raided for vast sums of money which were quickly transferred via a string of mule accounts provided by crooked bank employees before being withdrawn from the branches and ATMs, often just hours after the original fraud. Whilst on remand for that fraud, Mr Hamid and Mr Chowdhury had been sharing a cell at H MP Wandsworth. That cell was searched on the 24th of April last year, revealing a dirty phone, SIM card and a scrap of paper noting four account numbers among other contraband. One SIM was used to make more than 40 calls all on the 29th of March, with one getting through to precious metals traders at the Lawrence Group. Mr Hamid omitted a single count of conspiracy to defraud at Southwark Crown Court last month. Using 34 sample offences from the previous trial, prosecutor Tim Hunter assessed the intended loss through the conspiracy to be in the region of £500,000. In summary, the defendant conspired with others to conduct phishing frauds upon businesses based in the UK, while on remand for carrying out the same activity on a larger scale, for which he has been convicted and sentenced to a term of 11 years. The present conspiracy was unsuccessful in that no funds were diverted from the targeted companies. Mr Hunter told the court that prison officers discovered two Samsung mobiles, a phone battery, two chargers and three EE SIM cards during the cell search on the 24th of April. The piece of paper detailing the bank account was found at Chowdhury's bunk, but prosecutors opted not to pursue trials against him in light of his older brother's guilty plea. 
One of the phones, ending in 219, was used to call 41 landlines on the 29th of March. The use of a telephone on a single day only to make multiple calls was an element of the modus operandi in the Operation Cadenza conspiracy, said Mr. Hunter. In one call lasting one hour and 40 minutes, a director at the Lawrence Group, Sheldon Collins, was advised by a so-called Lloyd's Link operator that there had been a suspect payment via Lloyd's Link from the firm. Mr. Collins described the speaker as being very convincing, said the prosecutor. Mr. Hunter told the court director, he detected a note of frustration in the caller's voice, and also that the male seemed distracted as if there was someone else communicating with him. Judge Peter Testar said of the fraudster, he understands the banking system very well. He is somebody who has a very pleasant and persuasive manner. He talks fast and he is convincing and has a strong personality. And so he is able to talk to people into a position where the course of a telephone call, they can be deprived of a great deal of money. In fact, in one telephone call I hear, over the course of an hour, he talked to somebody into losing over one million pounds. He knows what he's doing, as I say, he understands the banking system and he is obviously playing for high stakes. It's apparent from the organizations he was targeting that that was what he was doing. The judge observed Mr. Hamid was again making a number of different calls until he gets a bite and accepted the figure put forward by the prosecution being justified. And if the defendant had gotten lucky, it probably would have been rather much more than that, he added. Mr. Hamid currently is in custody at HMP Wandsworth and was handed a consecutive two and a half year jail term. What do you think about Mr. Hamid and Mr. Chowdhury? Can you believe they had two million pounds coming in a month? Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a like and a share and leave any thoughts or suggestions you have in the comments section. We love to read through them all. And if you're new but enjoy UK true crime content, then subscribe to see when our newest video releases. And as always, stay safe.